Today I'm going to talk about Z-Wave. Talk about how Z-Wave works and then some of the pros and cons of Z-Wave. So after this video, you should have a really good idea of how Z-Wave works and whether you want to use this technology in your automation system. So first how Z-Wave works is it creates a mesh network. And here's how a mesh network works. You have a controller. This box represents a controller. A controller can be a handheld device, alarm system that has a Z-Wave chip built into it, or a standalone Z-Wave controller. So for this, say for example, we have a 2 gig. A 2 gig is an alarm system that also can do automation. And then you have a set of devices. These circles represent switches. And say I want to turn on that switch in the master bedroom. So what's going to happen is that controller is going to send the signal to the first switch. That switch is going to receive that signal, process it, and retransmit it to the next. And then so on until your light turns on. So what that happens is it creates a web of networks where each device repeats its signal and communicates to the next device in that line. Now all Z-Wave devices will do this except for battery powered uh, Z-Wave devices such as locks or thermostats. They use a technology called beaming and that's used to reserve battery power and then also for um, encryption and security purposes as well. So now that you know a little bit how Z-Wave works, we're going to talk about the pros and cons. First we'll go over the cons. The first big con of Z-Wave is range. Now Z-Wave claims that it's going to go 100 feet line of sight. Um, rarely is this case. I don't think I've ever seen Z-Wave go 100 feet. Uh, what happens is Z-Wave communicates on a radio frequency at the 908.42 megahertz. <clears throat> now that wavelength is a big wavelength. So the purpose is it's supposed to be able to go through walls better, but it also is limited on distance because it's a big wavelength. Um, now a good rule of thumb is probably 10 to 20 feet per device to repeat that signal. Uh, sometimes I've seen Z-Wave go, you know, 30 feet, but a good rule of thumb is probably about 15 feet. And also being on a 908.42 megahertz, being a wireless technology, um, if you have other devices that use radio frequency around that 900 megahertz range, there is possibilities of causing interference. I've seen universal remotes and uh, baby monitors cause interference, so you might want to check and see what uh, wireless devices you have, if they work on radio frequencies, and what frequency it works on, because there is possibilities of things interfering with Z-Wave. Now the next con is size. Z-Wave works great in a home, usually under 3,000 square feet. But once you get above 3,000 square feet or above a certain amount of nodes, what can happen is sometimes the end node will not receive the command. And what I mean by that is each time a device receives that signal and reprocesses that signal is called a hop. So this switch tells the next switch to turn on. Now Z-Wave is limited to four hops. So if you have a light at the other end of the house and it exceeds that amount of hops, then that light switch or device will not get that signal. So keep in mind that you are limited to four hops. Um, it works really good for homes under 3,000 square feet, but it can uh, cause a lot of problems with uh, homes above 3,000 square feet. And then also you gotta look what your home is made of if you're gonna have any other interferences. The next con with Z-Wave is with lighting um, specifically, it causes a popcorn effect. Now, this popcorn effect uh, bothers some people and some people it does not bother. So you're gonna have to determine if this is gonna bother you or not. Now, what this popcorn effect is, is say you have a scene and this is a good evening scene in the living room and you have the first overhead light set to go at 60% the next light to go at 30% and the next light to go at 100%. What's going to happen is since Z-Wave is a mesh network, each device is processing the signal and retransmitting it, you're going to have what's called a popcorn effect. 
the main light is going to come on, and then the next light, and then the next light. It's not going to be a uniform, nice, easy scene where everything fades up at the same time. So just keep this in mind uh, with your lighting. If this may bother you or not, some people it does, some people it does not. Uh, me, it doesn't really matter too much to me. Uh, the next con with Z-Wave is latency. Is Since Z-Wave is a mesh network and each device is communicating to the next, well, each time that switch takes in that signal, it has to process it and retransmit that signal. Now that takes fractions of a second. Um, that usually won't cause problems, but in certain scenarios, it does cause problems. So for example, say you have a motion detector activating a light switch in your closet. Well, when you walk into the closet, it could be you know one to three seconds before that light switch turns on, which can be really annoying and a pain. So just keep that in mind when you're designing your system that uh, RFs and Z-Wave with a mesh network, there is some latency uh, involved with that. So next we're going to talk about the pros. Uh, the first pro uh, with Z-Wave is price and variety. And we, I put those together just because they go together. So Z-Wave is regulated with the Z-Wave Alliance. And the Z-Wave Alliance allows over 200, 250 manufacturers to produce devices with that Z-Wave chip built inside. So having so many different manufacturers, it raises the competition, which in return, it's going to lower the price. And it's also really cool because you have so much variety of uh, equipment that you can choose from with Z-Wave. You've got three different lock manufacturers, you've got a few different uh, thermosets you can choose from. You've probably got 15 to 20 different switches you can choose from. So it is nice having that variety and um, being able to choose and have different uh, selections to your taste. The next we're going to talk about is wireless. Oops. So being a wireless technology, it really makes it easy for retrofits or to, it just makes it so easy for automation. So instead of uh, running wires to every device, uh, so like switches, uh, which pretty much impossible once you have the home built, you have to do it as the home is building. Um, all you're doing is replacing these switches or devices. Uh, you take out the thermostat and you put in a new thermostat. So a retrofit is pretty much the same as new construction. It makes it very easy to get into that. And on the con side, I kind of talked about a little bit, you know, some problems that wireless technologies do have as well. So the next one is DIYers, do-it-yourselfers, and alarm installers. <clears throat> so previously with automation, um, typically it was a very proprietary system. You needed a specialized programmer that could cost up to two to $300 an hour to program that system. But uh, Z-Wave has really opened up automation to the public. It has got a huge do-it-yourself movement. Um, and actually, that's how I started in this industry, is doing it yourself. I got a Vera and, uh, and some devices and just started playing around and fell in love with it after that. And so also alarm installers. Um, for the last 30 years, alarm systems really haven't changed that much. But now, a lot of them have built-in... Um, automation com communications built into it, Z-Wave chips built into it. So uh, typically alarm installer, they would just do alarm, but now it's enabling alarm installers to get into automation as well, so which is really cool. But the biggest one out of all these is uh, price and variety. <clears throat> Z-Wave has really gained a ton of popularity in America and it's really taken off. Uh, we're in uh, Europe, you probably Zigbee is quite a bit more popular. But America is Z-Wave because um, there's just so much support with manufacturers and it doesn't cost much to automate your house or automate a few devices. So the biggest pro on that is price and variety and that's why a lot of people do choose Z-Wave because it's probably the least expensive system out there and then there's just so many different devices you can, um, you can use. So I hope this video helped a little bit. I hope uh, you have a little bit grasp of how Z-Wave works. If you do have any questions, 
please feel free to put it in the comment section and uh, I'll do my best to uh, answer them. So I hope this video helped a lot. Thanks for watching.